If you're thinking about hiring an interior designer for your upcoming project, then do not turn off this video because today I'm going to share with you the biggest mistakes I see clients make when it comes to working with an interior designer and designing their new space. Hello there, my name is Kelsey and I am the founder and creative director of Kelsey Design Studio, a full service interior design firm specializing in commercial spaces for small and boutique style businesses. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for more interior design related content. Follow us on Instagram and check out our website at klsy.design where you can sign up for our email newsletter. Without any more introduction, let's just get right into the video. The first mistake people make when renovating or designing their new space is not hiring a designer at all. Specifically, I'm talking about commercial spaces, not only because that is my specialty, but mainly because there's so much more that goes into designing a commercial space versus a residential space. I'm not really talking about the design, I'm talking about the codes and regulations, ADA accessibility, user flow and user experience, fire rating, durability, the list goes on. Oftentimes for a small or low budget project, a client will decide to either take on the work themselves or hire a friend or a contractor to do the work. And yes, this will always be the most affordable route, but nine times out of 10, you end up with a space that's not thoughtfully planned. Uh, it goes against building code and it doesn't last the test of time ever. On the note of saving money, the second mistake I often see clients make is choosing the cheapest option versus the best option. Choosing to invest in designing and constructing your space can be very costly. Trust me, I have seen the invoices, it can get expensive. So in an effort to save as much money as they can, some clients will encourage their designers to cut corners or simply pick out the cheapest option. They'll wanna go with laminate instead of quartz or Ikea furniture instead of a actual real commercial furniture manufacturer. These things will definitely save you money, but after a few years, your space will be so worn down that you will need to spend more money just to upkeep it or you'll need to redesign it altogether. Of course, not every client can afford marble countertops, but a good designer will be able to guide you to determine what aspects of the project are worth investing in and which probably aren't necessary. Our goal is to design a sustainable space that will look beautiful for years to come. And sometimes that means spending a little bit more money out of the gate, because if you're going through this entire process and spending all of this money already, why not just do it right the first time? I know that people tend to focus more on the cost aspect of a project, but for me, the biggest mistake clients make is not trusting their interior designer. If you happen to be a designer watching this, you feel my pain. You are hiring a professional for their expertise, their experience, and their overall opinion. So it can be frustrating when a client doesn't trust us. It can be that they have an idea of what they want the space to look like and they're not open to any other ideas that we may have, or it can be that they already are sold with working with a particular manufacturer, even if the designer has had a negative experience working with that manufacturer in the past. Or relating to our last point, they are insisting that the designers select the cheapest option rather than the designer's recommendation. The result is oftentimes that the designer gives in and does whatever the client wants because at the end of the day, the client is the one paying for the project. But after all of it's built, they may realize that they don't like the design or the space wears out easily or working with that manufacturer actually was a pain in the butt. You've gone out of your way to hire a professional, so trust that we have your best interest in mind and try to release a little bit of control. A big red flag that I look out for when deciding to work with a client myself is when they have too many people making the decisions. This is a classic too many cooks in the kitchen situation. Usually what ends up happening is every person is trying to get their ideas into the project. This person wants the expensive chairs and this person wants the cool lighting and this person wants to hire a famous muralist for the walls. And the end result almost always looks like this. The project is way over budget because they're all trying to have their voice heard instead of focusing on what's actually feasible. And it ends up looking like a hodgepodge of five different designs in one because they all have different visions for the project. Design meetings are also a huge headache because instead of having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a designer and a client, you have several people talking and throwing out ideas, often contradicting each other, and it's extremely inefficient. I've been in meetings where one person will throw out an idea and then five minutes later, someone else will throw out an idea that is just completely contradicting that previous statement. And I just have no idea what the direction of the project is at that point 
I, I, I'm just so confused. <laughs> a client can have multiple people on the team to help guide the design and the decision making, but ultimately there should be one person who has the final say on everything. This will ensure that there is one cohesive design vision and that the project overall remains on track. As artists first, interior designers see incredible value in the concept phase. This is where you establish your project goals and your vision, you interview the client and the space users, and you explore the visual themes that the foundation of the design will be based on. Because this isn't the most glamorous phase of the project, clients often don't see the value in it, they don't wanna pay for it. They're eager to get to the design, so they will ask us to cut right to space planning and selecting furniture, but there is an organized and consistent design process for a reason. I personally view the concept phase as the most important one because it sets the stage for the rest of the project. It allows me as the designer to get clear on my client's vision and to uncover exactly what they want to achieve with the project. It also creates design rules for us to follow when selecting furniture and finishes and it assures that every decision relates back to the original vision. If this video was helpful for you, then let me know down in the comments. If you'd like to work with us in the future, that would be amazing because after watching this video, you are going to be the perfect client to work with. And then head over to our website at www.klsy.design and click on the contact tab to submit your request for a consultation. To be notified when we upload another video, which is every Monday, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.